inke dink, 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 inke Okay, let's see. Um, Tweety. He's not here. There's no snarky. Well, does the studio gonna, is it gonna run itself? Or are we gonna be able, what do you mean? You're looking around like, well, no Tweety. Okay. No Tweety. You had a guest. Mitch McConnell's cat? Didn't have a cat. Nazel said, uh, Said, nah. Well then, if Mitch McConnell's cat, Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell doesn't have a cat, who's going to show up on the, who had you planned to show up? Said, uh, okay, okay, I'm going to quote him first and then I'll, then I'll translate for you folks that haven't, uh, haven't yet mastered the, uh, the language of your, of your house cat. And you know you got to do that. Otherwise, how are you going to serve them properly? No, I don't mean. I don't mean. I don't mean serve them as in fillet or broil or no. Come on, that was a Twilight Zone episode. We got nothing to do with that. So, if no, if Mitch McConnell doesn't have a cat, who are you expecting? Okay, Basil. Basil said. Said. I was actually expecting his tortoise, but he has a cat too. He really does. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. I understand. I understand. You can't see me, so let me. I understand. You can't see me. Move stuff around a little bit. Okay, hold on, hold on, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay, hold on. Better? Basil said. No, 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 no. So, I'd like a little bit more professionalism, please. Um, okay, okay, hold on. Okay, okay. Red tie good? Okay. You know, this is about the best you're going to get out of me today. You know, for some reason your, uh, your camera dog, Snarky's not here. Your audio technician's not here. We can't even get the, uh, the external mic to work, so we've got to, got to tone down the, the volume on the fish tank and move everything around, and uh, who knows what's going to happen to the fish while we're taping. All, uh... And why do we have, why do we have, these fish are supposed to represent the uh, Denver Broncos. And of course now they're starting their summer, their summer routine for the season, and uh, by now they've probably played a, played a preseason game even, who knows. But, 
Well, none of them are floating at the top of the tank yet, so I guess they're okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. So while, so while I'm doing this, Mitch McConnell's cat said Mitch McConnell's cat is named Tortoise. And Mitch McConnell's tortoise is named the real tortoise. Okay. So, there. Okay. Okay. Formal enough for you? He said, uh, Basil says, uh, then barely. Okay, well that's, that's going to have to do. So, so now we have no no tortoise. We have no real tortoise or not tortoise or not tortoise and tortoise or we haven't we haven't got anything in that. So, have you got a sponsor yet? Short answer is said, Yeah, we got a got a sponsor. Okay. So what product is it? What are the, what does the company make that's sponsoring us? Okay, Basil well he took a quick look up into the um, up into the uh, the hammock and just to make sure that we've got Stephen Colbert and uh, uh, LFFF and uh, Craig Ferguson's up there. Okay. You expected Craig Ferguson today? Basil, uh, okay, he twisted his, he rotated his, all of his left whiskers two times counterclockwise, which means he's thinking. And he's going to come up more than likely with some sort of smart aleck remark. Um, okay, yeah, okay. Said, uh, Said, it's too hot for that today, so I'm not going to fool ya. So, the sponsor, back to the sponsor, said, uh, okay, okay, okay. He's, 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 still, he's still thinking, and I know he's going to come up with something that's, that's going to be annoying, um, but the audience seems to like it, so, um, said, said, it's an undergarment, originally designed for elderly cats and elderly dogs, but somehow or other it seems to have been adopted by, uh, by human beings. Well, and, and how how do they use it? What's the purpose of it? What is What function does it serve? Basil said, Depends me on said, uh, depends. Well, yeah. But what's... What can you tell us about this product? I mean, you know, you, you're supposed to be hawking these things, and, you know, you, we don't get paid, we don't get any, uh, ka if, um, if you don't, uh, do a little, uh, a little talking up of the product. What can you tell us about it? Said, uh... Depends. Said, depends. Okay. Wait a second. Where did this come from? Well, you're all reliable. Um, Basil, of course, as you may know, picked picked a bunch of these up in the veldt in Africa. He was on a safari. And he uh, picked a bunch of these up, he scooped them up, put them in a truck, brought them home, had them shipped home, uh, 
Did you have them shipped home by um, by air or by sea? Said uh, said to let them dry out, and then he skimmed them across the water, across the Atlantic, and one last big skip to 600 feet above sea level, and here they are in Bevel. Bevel, there's a bunch of them on the floor, so you know, either either somebody had really good aim, or or we got lucky. So, are we still doing these for? Um, are we still giving out you know homages to? Um, Dead people, places, things, animals, vegetables, minerals. Basil said, <laughs> and now they're, we're running short of them. We've got to hold on to the last few of them. Um, a few. We've got, I'm, I'm looking at about a hundred of them on the floor. Okay, so, all right, we'll hold on to them. So, um, try to do a little cat fishing. So, this product that we're supposed to be hawking, how do they pay us? You know, what's our, you know, what's our take on this? I mean, you know, what do they... How much ching are we getting for promoting this um, this product? Okay. Okay. Apparently, the, the fish is not very good today, and Walter's already put in uh, put in the uh, the forty second work week that we uh, expect of Walter, and uh, we're not paying we're not paying any overtime. So so um, how do we um, how do we how much do we get paid? How do they pay us? <sighs> okay, this time it's the right whiskers. Two of them. They kind of did a little hop up, a little stood up there on end for a, a moment. Kind of like this. And uh, said, uh, <laughs> That how do they pay us? Depends. Okay. Okay. That's getting us none. That's not getting us anywhere. So, um, no, uh, maybe we can get A&W Root Beer back into the, uh, back into the fold. Um, oh, excuse me, um, P A&W Root Beer. And, uh, we lost this account along the way because Basil insist on, uh, insisted on First of all, renaming A and W root beer P A and W root beer, and then going on ad nauseum about how how do we know that uh, P A and W root beer is uh, Basil's beverage of, beverage of choice? And of course, the answer is um, look at this cat pan, and you'll figure that one out. Um, if you had the lion using your cat pan, we probably would have found some of these in there. These came off the belt, and uh, Basil. Uh, Basil thinks that they're they're probably lion size uh, Hershey's Kisses. So now it's my turn to say it. Depends. He asked me, "What do you want to talk about today?" And my answer was, "Well, I'll, I'll say it in." Cat first, you folks in the audience that are still haven't learned to speak the language of your of your house cat. Depends. Um, depends. Um, have you decided yet who you're voting for? I mean, yeah, he votes. Yeah, Basil's. Basil's been voting, uh, he's been voting, um, the way a lot of people do. He, he flips a coin, and, uh, if, um, the coin's heads, he votes Republican, and the coin comes up tails. He's voting, um, Democratic. 
and if it stands on its side, he um, he votes for one of the uh, one of the unaffiliated, the uh, independent, the more independent candidates. In this case, of course, this year it's either Green, Green Party, Jill Stein, or the uh, Libertarian Party, Gary Johnson. So, who are you voting for? So he flipped the coin, and the coin landed on, it came up heads, and said, <laughs> said, um, he flipped it again. So you flipped it once, it came up heads, you flipped it again, what happened? <laughs> Said second time it came up tails. Okay, and said, uh, okay, he's telling me. What the hell? What the hell? What the Said he kept on flipping it. 1,897 times he flipped it. And... Okay. Okay. He said, let Lilith explain. Okay, well, Lilith's here. Lil Lilith Basil's... Um, this is, uh, of course, as you know, this is Lilith, and we know this is Lilith because... Um, and if you saw Lilith on the opening credits, you'll see her again on the closing credits um, with a big fluffy tail. And uh, you can tell it's Lilith because, uh, well, when Lilith passed away, the calico cat came back to us three days later. And um, it does sound a little religious, doesn't it? She came back to us as the calico stone. And you know it's Lilith because, well, at least we know it's Lilith, because uh, there's, there's her head, there's her, her tail, and weighs about as much as Lilith did. About, yeah, about the same weight. Uh, only not, not quite as fluffy. So, okay. You want Lilith to explain? Okay, hold on. Okay. But we know Lilith's going to be on the, uh, the cat and hat phone. Yep, she's there. Lilith is in the, of course, in the hereafter with Basil, and, uh, but... But she always seems to hang around, and she's got this open line with the cat and the hat phone. We've got the cat and the hat phone, we've got uh, uh, the Nickelodeon phone, uh, we've got uh, the um, red phone, the hotline, we've got uh, the, uh, the inky dinky phone. Uh, the now we're going down, down, we're scaling down. The, the, the smaller the phone, the, uh, the less, less important that our our caller in is. And that's why Lilith gets automatically gets the um, gets the uh, the cat in the hat phone. That's that's her that's her method of. Uh, hey Lilith. Okay. Oh, and I forgot the uh, the micro inky dinky phone, which um, oh there it is. Okay, hold on. Okay, got it. hold on. I dropped it again. Got it. The uh, the micro inky dinky phone is for callers in, and we've had some, some good conversation on this phone, because, um, you know, it's gotten us some, some people that Dazzle doesn't seem to think much of, but, but you know, the, the folks who watch the show have interest in uh, hearing we've had, uh, we've had uh, uh, the ghost of Barry Goldwater on a while back, and he was on, on bragging about how he always knew that Hillary Clinton was going to be the, the candidate for president one day when when she was stumping for him back in uh, back in 1964 as a Goldwater girl, he knew that she would come something. He knew that she would uh, be be something real important one day. So there you go. So we've got um, we've had uh, Barry Goldwater on. We've had uh, not Joe Arpaio. Not sure if Joe Arpaio, but we've had uh, Lil. Hold on a second. Uh, we've not Joe Arpaio, but we've had Joe Arpaio's wife calling in a number of times and. Uh, you know, we get the number up on the screen, you know, uh, when Snarky and Tweety are here, they give us the number, they show us the, uh, the, the caller ID of the number the person's call in, they cross-reference it, and we, and we find out who it is. So, 
we get Joe Arpaio's wife in on quite a few occasions, and we always hear this 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 cranky sort of breathing in in the background, and we surmised finally that that's probably Joe Arpaio with his with his hand on on the back of her neck, you know, kind of you know prompting her uh, what he wants her to say, you know, because you know he knows best. But um, so Sheriff Joe Arpaio's wife who um, we discovered quickly the first time on, her first name is actually Sheriff Joe Arpaio's wife, and last name Arpaio. So we've had, we've had her on, we've had, uh, oh my goodness, we've had um, all kinds of, we've had uh, Donald Trump's 12 cats, all of them, and every one of them is named Whitey. And, uh, you know, he likes to have uh, it, the economy of, of calling out one name and getting twelve responses. He likes that. He gets that in the. Um, he gets that when he does his um, his stump speech. He says um, he says um, the alien and people either watch for UFO buzzing around or, or just you know they just react by by cheering. He says um, wall people cheers his followers cheer. He says, uh, crooked Hillary Clinton and his followers cheer. He says, uh, Obama's a Muslim, his, his followers cheer and clap. And, and uh, But, at any rate, Lilith, Lilith, um, how are you voting? And, more importantly, how are you voting? Okay, she's, um, she asks, do you want the, uh, the short answer or the long answer? Okay, well, you know, well, let's start with the um, let's start with the short answer. Okay, she says. Um, <laughs> says she's voting for the woman because she's always wanted to have, always wanted to have a woman in the White House. So she wants. She says she found herself a, a woman that that is a real good candidate. Uh, is fabulous. Um, Almost as good, almost as good as Elizabeth Warren. And because she's almost as good as Elizabeth Warren, she says that's that's good enough because she's excited about having a woman candidate. She's um, you know you never know who's going to win the election, but she says she's going to vote for the woman candidate that um, that she respects and best represents the good in America. <laughs> Said uh, Jill Stein. Okay, okay, I understand that. You know, I, you know, Basil. Basil's excited about having a woman in the White House. He says he's been looking forward to that for for quite some time. And uh, says um, Basil says um, meow. Said um, he didn't need to prompt Lil on who to vote for because because Lil Lil's been in the hereafter for a long time. She sees all, knows all. She's seated at the right hand of, of the the cat of uh, the son of the son of the father, the son of God. You know, so she's at the right hand of the cat, at the left hand of the uh, son of the father, and she's pretty. You know, she's pretty knowledgeable. She always wasn't pretty knowledgeable, but um, okay. So you're you're voting for Jill Stein, and I know I know Basil's voting for Jill Stein. Um, Bill's asking me, who am I voting for? Okay, um, okay, I'll say, I'll say, I haven't voted yet. You know, I'm, I don't do the absentee ballot from the hereafter like you guys do. But I'm voting for the candidate that best represents the good in America. The candidate that um, is not a corporate candidate, the one that, um, one that uh, understands the needs of of working working families and uh, oh yeah, Jill Stein. It's, in the, it's unanimous. Okay. So, Basil, is there something else you want to ask, Lil? Is there something else you want her to explain? Said. Um, <laughs> said. Okay, you gave us a short answer. What's the long answer? Okay, got that little, what's, what's the long answer? 
gave us the short answer to the answer to the question of who you're voting for. Um, what's the long answer? She said, uh, "Wow, yeah, good enough for you." You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to translate that because it would take me about a half of an hour to translate it, and we only have 28 minutes per show, so I can't do it. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to sit down and have a, a have a talk with your house cat and uh, learn to speak the language. I mean, you know, is that why? <laughs> and now I now I think I understand why um, why Snarky's not here today. Because Basil's been Basil's been kind of ranking on dogs lately, and Basil, yeah, yes, you do. Said uh, Basil, um, gave me a wry a wry tweak of his nose, and you know, you understand, yeah, okay. So Basil, Basil's been been, you know. He likes to talk about snarky, and he's not being disrespectful, but but he's, he makes a plain that, that we understand, and it's true, that dog... Long enough, I'm going to put you up on, on the uh, receiver. We can still hear you. You're on... Okay, we'll hear you. You'll hear us. Um, Basil likes to remind us periodically, whenever he gets an opportunity to sneak it in, that... Dog, the language of dog, the language of dog speak, is it, and it's a universal one, regardless of whether it's Scotty or a Sheltie or a, a Malamute or a whatever, any kind of you know, any kind of dog, any kind of shepherd, uh, collie, um, regardless, same language. I mean, they all they all can make exactly the same sounds, although it might not seem that way. But dog only has four ideas, four words, concepts, ideas, notions, and uh, and uh, one is feed me. Hmm. You think I'm going to say feed me for the other three too, aren't you? No, no. One is feed me. Two is scratch my belly. Three, take me for a walk. And four is, whoops. I piddled on your carpet. And, uh, you know, that's just how it is. What are we up to in, uh, in cat language now, Basil? Basil speaks um, not Cantonese, but he speaks Catanese. And, uh, you know, that's what cats in, uh, in the Buddhist, in the Buddhist uh, faith philosophy, um, this is what uh, cats are described to Buddhism. And Basil, as you know, is a devout Christian religiously, and a Buddhist philosophically, and he, he will tell you, no, don't tell us, because it'll take another two hours. Um, short version, in English, is that um, there's very little that separates Buddhists, um, the Buddhists from Buddhists from Christians, and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Basil and I both, both are devout Christians, religiously, and we're both relig uh, Buddhists philosophically, and there's very little difference of any between those two, uh, those two ways of, of thinking. In fact, Basil, Basil's been getting a little annoyed lately, and we might have to pick that up on the second show. But let's see what we got left for time. Um, yeah, we got a. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back, and uh, then we're gonna uh, talk a little about talk a little religion. But Basil Woodcap presents. I'm David Stevenson, Basil's co-host, interpreter, chief gopher. Um, and we shall see you Sunday morning. And that'll be as normal, our uh, more religious oriented show. And uh, see you Sunday morning. Good night. They say they'd rob your grandma blind on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Fritter her, her away her Medicare on Wall Street. And pharma oil and their pet fox don't care if she lives in a box. So long as they wear platinum jocks on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Meow.